A word from the Lord, James over here with you once again on Sunday evening. I believe uh, Johnny ought to be back next week, so get ready for that. I uh, want to always remind you of our content information and also be ready to come to the tent. I know many of you probably in Danville are already getting flyers passed out. We're going to be knocking doors and letting you know about the tent that is going to be set up next to Leggett's on Mount Cross Road. I believe it's 335 Mount Cross Road right across from the UPS station and also uh, in, I think it's the parking lot of the of former Uplay is, is what, it, what it is. But anyway, glad that you uh, are, are with us and hope that you'll make plans for that uh uh, for that event, it starts October the 20th, and uh, we hope to see you there. Uh, no collections will ever be taken, but Bible questions will certainly be answered, and so we hope that you will plan on attending that event. If you'd like to reach me, uh, we'd be glad to have a Bible study with you, 276-340-2653, or you can email me at wordforlord.gmail.com. And uh, I want to tonight begin by telling you I believe that you're going to find something very interesting tonight. As a matter of fact... If you uh, stay tuned, you're actually going to see me being healed by Prophet Bill Daniels from Kernersville, North Carolina. And I know that's something probably everyone's going to see, but we did go and see uh, the, the so-called prophet himself, and uh, he was over in Mayadan. We went over there last night and uh, got some very good footage. And believe it or not, they were actually courteous enough to let us film. So all you over there at Faith Memorial Baptist Church, I don't know what you have to hide. I mean, here the Pentecostals are out here. They're not hiding. Uh, they're, they're rolling around on the floor and acting crazy. But they're, you know, they're glad for people to film it. So, you know, I don't know. I, I suspect that individuals who don't want to be recorded or don't want it to be known what's going on behind their walls, uh, you know, maybe some little cultish activity is going on. I don't know. Maybe something in a secret. Some, uh, something taboo may be going on. But nonetheless, we're going to let you know about our experience over at uh, Mayadan yesterday or last night with the prophet Bill Daniels, so-called prophet Bill Daniels from Kernersville, North Carolina. Let me start by saying this. <clears throat> In the Bible, God said to his prophet, his true prophet, holy men of God, uh, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, Peter says, but in the Bible, when God's prophet spoke and demonstrated that he was speaking from God, God said in the end, even if they will hear or not, he says whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. He said it doesn't matter how hard-headed they are, how stiff-necked they are, even though they may not accept what you say, they will know that there has been a prophet among them. So he said, it's going to be evident, obvious, that you, Ezekiel, are my spokesman, you are my man, and they'll know that there's been a prophet among you, them because of the way you have preached, the way you've conducted yourself, and the way you have boldly proclaimed my message. Now, the Apostle John tells us something else about, apostles, about prophets. He says in 1 John 4 and verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, watch it, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Tonight, I want you to know that it may be that the prophet that is among you is not the prophet of God. It may be that it is a false prophet. And there are a lot of people who claim to be prophets, and most of them are folks like uh, Mr. Bill Daniels, who claims to be a prophet, Here's the invitation, and I just want to say this. This is why we went over there. This was a card that came in the mail. I have the address blocked off, so you won't see the sister or brother who received it in the mail. But nonetheless, we had an invitation, a personal invitation, to come over to the revival that Bill Daniels was hosting in Mayadan, and so we, we attended. We attended. And uh, that should be something that you need to think about, too. You know, uh, let me just say at this point, uh, friends, for all, you, all of our religious neighbors, you know, we get things in the mail, and some of you pastors, your, your members are passing out tracts that invite us to come to your assemblies. Or you call on TV, and, you invite, and your members invite us to come over to your assemblies. Or maybe you actually have a phone bank and you're actually calling people 
uh, who have visited your assemblies before and you're calling them and inviting them to come to things or come to events at your, at your church, you need to keep this in mind that when you're inviting that person on the street, handing out a tract that says come to our assembly, or when you're making that phone call or when you're mailing out these letters and so forth, you may be inviting a member of the Church of Christ to come to your assembly. So don't be upset when we come. You know, I just, I'm amazed that, that you all would get upset when we come to your assembly. We bring Bible in hand. We come to ask questions. We come to investigate. We come to examine what's being taught, what's, what's going on. And then you get mad when we come. Well, if I was you, I would look cross-eyed or cross-ways at every stranger that came through your door because they just might be someone in the Church of Christ, you know? And some of you folks out there that uh, look like you've been sucking on a lemon and you're sour all the time, you don't like to see strangers because, oh, they may be wanting to ask a question. Well, you know what? That serves you right because you don't want to be examined. You don't want to be investigated. When someone off the street comes in, uh, you just go ahead and treat them, treat them gruffly. Treat them uh, rudely because, after all, you're trying to hide something. We don't have anything to hide. But we got this invitation. We went over to the uh, Bible Revival Hour uh, Evangelistic Revival, whatever you want to call it, and uh, by invitation, we went over there to see what was going on, to examine it, and to see what was, what was going to take place. And so this is what we found. Now, what I want you to notice is on this invitation, this is what Bill Daniel says about himself. He says that he is a powerful prophet who operates under the anointing of the Holy Ghost in word of knowledge and prophecy. Come and believe God for your deliverance. So there's his claim to fame. There's his, his uh, uh, calling card, if you will, a powerful prophet operating under the anointing of God, under the Holy Ghost in word of knowledge and prophecy. Now, what I'm going to submit to you tonight, friends, is that Bill Daniels is not a prophet of God. He is not operating under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, nor is he giving you a word of knowledge and prophecy from God. What he is doing is he is deceiving people, he is conniving, and he is taking advantage of all the, the uh, simple or all the un- uh, 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 discerning the individuals who would uh, believe anything the Bible says in Romans 16 17 and 18 Paul says those that teach a contrary doctrine notice and then notice what he says about how they lead people astray Romans 16 and verse 18 he says for they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I submit to you that's Bill Daniel and I'm going to prove it tonight. I'm going to show you tonight what kind of prophet there really was among us or there is among us. What kind of prophet is among us and is over in Kernersville and is on the airwaves and is and is, is uh, spilling his, spewing his ilk and deceiving the hearts of many by his, by his speech, by his willingness to get them all hopped up and trick them out of their money. Let's just find out what kind of prophet Bill Daniels really is. And by the way, you'll see this tonight, he was invited to come and be on this program Thursday night. And, you know, he, and we're going to show that he actually opened the door for it himself. And we just extended the invitation and then he backed out, which we figured. But nonetheless, let's just see what kind of prophet Bill Daniels is by comparing him to a biblical man of God. Let's just see what kind of prophet Bill Daniels really is by comparing him to someone that God we know God would accept, that we know God would approve of, and that we know God would uh, uh, certainly uh, vouch for if he was to say, he is my spokesman, he is my servant. So let's see what kind of prophet Bill Daniels really is. Let's first begin by noticing something about a man of God, a true man of God. After all, if you're going to find the original or you're going to find counterfeit, you need to study the original. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, a true prophet or true man of God would agree with other known prophets. That's how you know if a man is truly uh, speaking for God. 
If any man, Paul says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So here he's saying, look, if you're questioning what the apostle Paul is saying, let someone who thinks himself to be a prophet just confirm what I'm saying. You see, a true prophet, a true spiritual man, would acknowledge that indeed Paul was an apostle and he was speaking the commandments of God. And the reason why is because they all spoke the same thing because they were speaking by the same authority. You see that? We get down to that dirty word again. That's one of those words you, you, most of you folks don't like to hear, but there it is. They're speaking by the same authority. They're speaking by the same authority, and thus they're speaking as the commandments of God. In Jude 17, I'm going to get over here and try to open up my Bible program for us so that we can uh, read the Bible together. I know uh, many of you have commented you all like to see this on the screen, and I, I like for you to do your finger exercises and turn over, uh, find it in your Bible just to be familiar with the text and know where you can find it in your Bible. But nonetheless, we, want to do, we do want to pull it up here so that all can, could read it and, and uh, Jude 17. <clears throat> but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here is the word of God coming from Christ through his apostles. All right? So the word of God from, from uh, spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They came through the apostles through the Jesus Christ. Peter will say, get back over here to our, our uh, chart, 2 Peter 3 and verse 2. 2 Peter 3 verse 2. Peter says, this second epistle, beloved, I write now unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. You see, Jesus gave them a command about what to speak. He gave them a command about what to teach. So if another prophet comes on the scene, it ought to be that he is going to acknowledge that the things from an apostle are indeed commandments of God. Now, here's where you can test something, friend. Here's where you can test and see if, if someone like Bill Daniels is indeed a prophet or a false prophet, whether he is a true prophet of God or whether there is a false prophet among us. You can tell if what he says and what he does agrees with what we know to be commandments of apostles and prophets who were given direction by Jesus Christ. See, if their words agree, then you know, then you know that, well, he's speaking the truth. He's speaking the truth. So let's just see. Let's just see if guys like Bill Daniels are, are speaking the same things. Now, let's go back to the apostle Paul. Let's see if what Paul says is going to agree with what Bill Daniels does. And says, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 34, he said, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, this is what Paul says. He said in 1 Timothy 2 and 11, he says, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, there is something that we know an apostle said. An apostle had given this command. Apostle has given this uh, charge that a woman keep silence in the church, not speak or usurp authority over a man. And if someone comes along and says something contrary to that and claims to be an apostle, guess what? I'm going to look at them really, really strictly. I'm going to look at them really, uh, you know, scrutinize them. And I'm going to say, you know what? You're, what you are saying is not agreeing with what Paul said. Paul said, if you're a prophet, then you will agree with what he said. 
you would actually confirm this is the truth. But most of these modern-day prophets will say that's not the truth because many of the modern-day prophets today are prophetesses. You see? They're the women themselves who are actually usurping authority and doing the very thing that we know an apostle would say you can't do. You can't do that. Now, someone's going to say, well, Philip had, had four daughters that prophesied. Oh, yes, he did. That's right. You're exactly right. In Acts 21, Philip had, had four daughters. Uh, Philip the Evangelist had four daughters to prophesy. Acts 21, verse uh, 8. Let's just go ahead and put that back up on the screen. Acts 21, verse 8. The next day we that were of, Paul, of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven and abode with him. The same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So they prophesied. I'm not, I'm not uh, denying that. But what I am wanting to know is where and to whom did they prophesy? Because see, the apostle Paul has already said, or he will say in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 14, we just read, that they can't prophesy in the church. So if they prophesy, it has to be that it is going to be governed by what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 or what he said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Wherever these four daughters are prophesying, they're not doing it by teaching or usurping authority over man. And notice, let's read on down. And as they tarried there many days, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Now here's another prophet coming down. And when he was coming to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, uh, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now why is it that these four daughters, or at least one of these four daughters who prophesied, why didn't they bring that prophecy to Paul? Why did a man, a male prophet, have to come from Judea to where Paul was and give this prophecy when there were four prophetesses right there in the very same house. I'll tell you why. Because it is not lawful, that is, it is not God's command that a woman teach nor usurp authority over man. See how simple that is? So when I hear someone then say, well, well, you know, these women can prophesy and they can take charge and they can lead and so forth in the church. No, ma'am. No, sir. Not to say that they can't teach, but they can't teach your usurp authority over man. But let's look at what the prophet says, the prophet that we went to see yesterday. Let's see if he is indeed a prophet of God. Prophet Bill actually allows and encourages what Paul prohibits. I bet it wasn't five. I bet it wasn't two minutes into into uh, Prophet Bill's sermon that he started uh, uh, soliciting uh, conversation from the women in the audience, encouraging them to speak up and give testimonies or whatever. But even before that, there were women who were leading in the worship. Look at this. Here's here's a woman who's leading uh, the singing, or she is singing. Here's the other woman. You can see her outstretched hands here. She's leading the others. We'll display a little bit of it, let you see it. I'm going to apologize in advance for the audio because it was a very, uh, 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 what, cavernous building there, so a lot of uh, feedback and so forth like that, but we'll just see what we can do here. trying to demonstrate that the, the ladies, the women were leading the singing. They were, they were uh, usurping over a man. Paul said, I wouldn't have that. So what Prophet Bill teaches contradicts what Apostle Paul teaches. And Paul says, let a man who claims to be a prophet, let him acknowledge that I'm right. Prophet Bill says, no, Paul, you're not right. You're not right. So I'm going to take the Apostle Paul over Prophet Bill. 
I'm going to take that over, over Prophet Bill. Now, let's move on. Let's notice this. I want you to notice this about a man of God, a true man of God, someone who is demonstrating that he is speaking for God or he is on, on terms with God and he is doing God's will. Notice a true man of God, their words don't fall to the ground. In 1 Samuel 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, from the highest north point to the further south point, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. You see, you know if someone's a prophet if their words don't fall to the ground. That is to say, if they don't uh, falter or if they come to pass, you know he's a prophet. But if his words fall to the ground, if they, they're empty, they're vain, then you know he's not a prophet. He didn't speak by God. But Samuel... Samuel was established to be a prophet of God because his words were true. His words were true. And so it is the case that if we look at Prophet Bill, the man who claims to be a prophet of God, who claims to be speaking uh, as a prophet under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and in word of prophecy and knowledge and so forth like that, let's just see if he's established. Let's see if his words will be established or whether they'll fall to the ground. I submit to you, friends, that within the space of of an hour, his words had already fallen to the ground. That's just how weak of a prophet he is. Now, what you're going to see in this first clip, what you're going to see in this first clip is him actually walking through the assembly, and uh, this lady right here, she's sitting in front of me. I'm sitting right over here. <clears throat> and he's going to come up, and he's healed her. Or he's laid hands on her and, and slapped oil on her head or whatever. And, uh, and then he's going to move on to me. And I hope you can hear what he says. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate what, you, what he says to me. And let's just see what he uh, prophesies, I guess, about me or the word of knowledge he gives. <laughs> now, he, there I am. You can see me sitting down right there. And here's... Here's Bill, got his hand on my back, and he's laying hands on me. God's going to help fix my broken heart. Now, you know, I didn't know I had a broken heart. My heart's ticking just fine, and if he's talking about an emotional heart, my, my, I'm in good spirits, you know. Uh, me and my wife, we get along pretty good. I'm, I'm not upset about anything. I don't know why he said we have a broken heart, but he, apparently he's getting this from God, so, you know, we'll just give God the benefit of the doubt up to this point. Uh but let's listen. Go ahead and listen to him. <clears throat> Others don't even know what we're going through. I, I don't think he knows what, what, what I'm going through. And uh, what's prior to that, let me just tell you this, prior to that, it was kind of hard for him to hear, but he said the Lord is going to open a door for me.
he's healing an underactive thyroid. He's healing a hip. clapping apparently they believe that something has taken place you see what they don't know is that what supposedly God was telling the prophet Bill about me and this gentleman was that you know he would apparently he was getting some information that even we didn't have but they think that well because Bill said it it must be true but later on let's find out what uh, Let's find out what Bill says when he learns that he was wrong. Mr. Daniels, you prophesied, or you, you, you spoke over Mitch and me and, and said all the things that uh -huh. were wrong with us, but uh, those, those things aren't wrong with us. Well, that's okay then. So, so you're wrong. Okay. So God well, was telling you wrong. That's, that's fine. So that's God fine. was telling you wrong? No. The thyroid has been tested over and over and over, and there's nothing wrong with okay. it. Okay. Okay. So whatever um, you say. And, and all right. So he's wrong. Okay, okay, that's fine. Well, it may be fine to you, but if a man is saying he's getting all this from God th about people he doesn't even know and all through every time he was healing somebody or healing them of their nerve problems or whatever, he'd ask, no, nah, I've never talked to you before, have I? You know, he, he, he didn't say that to me. I wonder why. Is it because he knows he didn't talk to me before so he doesn't have to, have to ask me? Or he, he knows no one would question whether he's talked to me before about any of my problems. But when it comes to maybe some of these ladies, maybe he has talked to them about their problems. And so he's trying to let you think that he hasn't talked to them, but he really has. I don't know. But I'm just saying, when a, when a guy's trying to pull the wool over your eyes, you know, you start questioning everything he says. And here's a man who's claiming to get all this information about all these people that God is telling him healing all these people's arthritis and their hurt knees and their hurt backs, and they're going to be over their nerve problems. And then he comes up to us, and when we say, you know what, we don't, we don't have a broken heart, and we don't have a thyroid problem. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll be wrong. Well, if you're wrong, prophet, then God's wrong. So either God's wrong because you're wrong, or either you're wrong because God never said it. Now, which is it? You see, I submit to you, friends, that Bill Daniels, he doesn't get any more message from God than the man in the moon. See, he's making all this stuff up. He's making this stuff up. He's saying things that, that he believes would be true about someone. And then he gets people to uh, convince that he is some great person. Now, does that remind you of someone in the Bible? Does that remind you of someone that maybe you meet in Acts chapter uh Let's say Acts chapter 8 and about verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Can you turn that down now? I, I think it's going to get a little feedback. And there was great joy in the city that there was a certain man. Uh, there's great joy in the city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. You know what I saw last night at Maidan? What I saw last night was there was a certain man named Bill which used sorcery and bewitched the people giving out that he himself was some great one, the people of, of Maadan, giving out that he himself was some great one. 
And some of those ladies, one in particular, said she was glad he was there because she moved there three months ago and, and the Lord sent him to Maidan. Now, he's got somebody fooled. And I know he's got them fooled because they give me money for us all over with. But he's tricking these people. They giving heed to him as if he's some great, something great, saying he is the great power of God. You see? They're building him up something that, that he's not, something that he can't prove because his words have not been established. Within an hour's time, the things that he said were true about me and this other gentleman were not true. And uh, if, if the other man wants to call up and just tell about his problems, what his real problems really were, you know, we might start wondering, well, what, you know, what prohibited or what prevented Bill from talking about these other things? You know, the obvious things. I want to know, well, why didn't, why didn't Bill just tell the audience and everybody why I was there? Why didn't he just walk up to me and say, you know what, you don't agree with what we're doing here. Now, that wouldn't be a big step. Everybody knows that we wouldn't agree with what's there. Anybody who knows us would know we're not agreeing with it. But why didn't he go ahead and tell us? Why didn't he go ahead and tell the audience that we have a devil or something? You see? Why didn't he pretend like we were with him? You know, at least tell him something that he'd get close to right. You see, but the fact that his words are not established the fact that his words have not been established, they fell to the ground, shows me that unlike Samuel, he's not a prophet of God. He's not established to be a prophet of God. He's not a real prophet. He's not really a prophet. He's a, he's a, a, a pseudo-prophet. He's not real. Now, listen to what Deuteronomy says. In Deuteronomy 18.21, this is what was said about a prophet. If thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? How do you know what is not from the Lord? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, and Bill Daniels was, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. He missed it. He missed, that. He missed the health problems. He missed the internal things. And I didn't want to see someone's arm restored. I didn't want to see someone's leg restored. All I saw was cancer being healed. All I saw was nerves being healed. All I saw was reflux disease being healed. Well, if he'd known, I, I, ate, a, I ate a taco for lunch that day, and I had a little heartburn going on. Why didn't he heal my reflux, my heartburn? See, I guess God just overlooked that. Ezekiel said, and when this come to pass... Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. You see, when things come to pass, when things happen, just like the prophet said would happen, or when he's predicting it, then, then he must be a prophet of God. But when he misses things so obvious and claims that God is speaking to them, I tell you what, he's not a prophet. His word hasn't been established. His word hasn't been verified. It's fallen to the ground. So Bill Daniel's not a prophet. That's twice. He hadn't agreed with what Paul said about women, women's role in the church. He hasn't agreed with what God says about a prophet's words not falling to the ground. I dare say there's going to be another, some more things that, that he's not going to hold to. Listen to this. Paul said in 2 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 9, here's another area. Paul said, and when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to, uh, lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied, and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so I will keep myself. He says, look, I'm not going to be a burden to you. I'm not going to ask of you things that are going to be a burden to you. The Apostle Peter said that there were some individuals. He's warning about them. He says, And through covetousness shall these men with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Now Paul is, is saying to these brethren in Corinth, I don't want to be a burden to you. 
And Peter is, one, is warning about individuals who would make merchandise of you. Paul says, I won't do what Peter's warning about. Peter's warning about things, and Paul says, look, I don't want to be guilty of it. So here's two apostles saying that a true man of God won't be burdensome unto, unto the people. They won't make merchandise of you. See, they won't, they won't take advantage of you. But let's see what Bill says. Prophet Bill, when he comes on the scene before you leave, before you leave, guess what he does? He puts a big bucket up there on the floor and asks everybody to come in and put in some money. But not just putting in some money. Not just putting in some money. He asks them to put in a specific amount of money. Let me come on down here. I think I have, here it is. Here's the envelope that Prophet Bill was giving out. I don't remember how many he tried to give out. Uh, I think it's like seven of them. That would make sense. I, I think he might have given out five if I counted right. But one of them fell into uh, uh, good soil, and that's how I got about it. But notice this. See this 77? That's how many dollars the prophet, the man of God who would not be burdensome unto you, wanted these people to send in in this envelope. $77. $77. Now, you know why I say it's a burden? Because one of the women that took the one of these envelopes for $77, he had already told her she was in debt. So, unless all of a sudden she miraculously had some money waiting on her when she got home, she was still in debt when she got this envelope. But yet, he told her to send him $77. Knowing good and well she's in debt. She ain't got out of debt yet. Send him some money. And see, it's not just $77. But it's other things. Listen to him beg for money. Listen to him beg for money. about 10 years and they're on TV and guess how they did it? All on the people's back. Always begging for money. See, we wouldn't be able to be on these TV for 36 years if it hadn't been for you you uh, 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 good, honest-hearted, sincere suckers out there sending money to me. That's what he's saying. You know, send me money so we can stay on TV. Now, he's been the, he's been the so-called pastor or prophet at this one church for 26 years. Surely in that period of time, they could be established enough to support this ministry, this great prophetic ministry that Prophet Bill Daniels is, is uh, involved in. You see? Surely that could happen. But no. No. He's still begging for money. He's still begging for money. Uh, let me let's go back to this one right here. Now, this one is not just begging for money, but notice, he's going to sell his DVDs. says about the DVD. You, 
since you've been here tonight. For you being here tonight, I want you to have this DVD for $20. Boy, that's a bargain, isn't it? You drive all this way to hear the prophet, the man of God, and he's going to give you a DVD if you give him $20, at least $20. Now, friend, something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. Here's the prophet, the great man of God. All of his wisdom and all of his, his uh, inspired oracles that he's speaking, all of his great messages of God, and he's selling it? He's selling it? But not only that, he wants to really make sure that you give him $20. Watch this gentleman. Watch this gentleman that comes up here in just a moment. Here he comes. Put the money in the pot. Take the DVD. Whoop, you didn't get enough money. There he is. Take the DVD. Whoop, 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 whoop. He didn't take enough money. He takes it back from him. All right. Wait, 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 wait. That, that was just a $10 bill in there, son. That wasn't quite enough. Now, ask yourself this, friend. Your friends in the Church of Christ have never, ever, 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 never, ever, never, ever, never, 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 ever ask you for one thin dime, nickel or penny, for a DVD. We never have. We've never asked for one dime, one nickel, one penny for the books that we give away, Tradition of Men versus the Word of God. Never. And I defy anyone to call up and say that we told you you had to give us some money before we'd give you any literature. Never have. Never will. Now, who is more like, who is more like the man of God in this scenario? Is it Bill Daniels being a burden to people who he knows are in debt if his message from God's right, which we've already certain that it's falling to the ground, but let's just say he was right about that one. Here the woman's in debt. He asked her for $77, and you can have a DVD of my inspired sermons if you give me at least $20. Now who's being a burden to these individuals? Who's making merchandise of them? See, Paul said, I want to make sure that I'm not a burden to you. I want to make sure that I don't impose upon you. I want to make sure that you are, are uh, free so you can do the, the work of the Lord. But yet, here's Bill Daniels going, oh, I need some money. Who's the prophet? Who's really the man of God in this scenario? Now, good friend, you're watching. I know you can see the difference in this. Bill Daniels is not like the Apostle Paul. He's not like a man of God. But your friends in the Church of Christ will we'll never ask you for one thin dime to support this television program, television ministry. We give all of our literature away. If you come to our tent meeting, tent meeting in Danville, you'll find a table full of tracts and DVDs, and they'll be all there free. They'll be out there free of charge. Why? Because we're not making money. We're not in the money-making business. If we want to be in the money-making business, we could be. But we're not. Why? Because we're trying to be more like the men of God you read about in the Bible. The true men of God. You'll never see us packing an envelope saying, put $77 in it. You won't hear us giving an envelope saying, put seven cents in it. Why? Because we're not making merchandise of people. But Bill Daniels, I'll tell you what kind of prophet's among you. A false prophet. That's exactly right. Now, here's another thing about a man of God. He's not afraid to give a defense. He's not afraid to defend what he teaches or what he preaches. Philippians 1, 17, but the other of love, Paul says, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. All these so-called miraculous preachers, not just Bill Daniels, but we're talking about him tonight, so we'll specify him. Men like Bill Daniels, they wouldn't defend the gospel that they teach, true or not. They wouldn't defend the message they teach for love nor money. Well, they might do it for money if you gave them enough, but I doubt it. They have too much to lose. But they won't give a defense, but apostle would. Paul would. 
and someone who is a prophet would have to say that Paul is right in making this statement. As a matter of fact, Paul uh, behaved this way. In Acts 17, here he is in Athens, in Mars, he's at, at Mars Hill. And notice what the Bible says. When Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. It stirred him up. And he says, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. He was out disputing because he saw idolatry. He saw people not serving the true and living God and it stirred him up to where he would dispute. But you know what Prophet Bill Daniel said? Well, I ain't going to argue the Bible. You know what all these so-called Holy Ghost filled people say? Well, I'm not going to argue the Bible. It's a sin to argue the Bible. It's wrong to dispute. We'll take it up with a real man of God. And as a matter of fact, when the Apostle Paul was invited to go up to Mars Hill and give a defense, I want you to notice what happened. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? And, and uh, uh, other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Verse 19, And they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. You see, when a real man of God came to town, he stirred up people by disputing with their doctrines. See, he took the truth and he disputed with false doctrine. And it got to the point that he was invited to a format, a venue, where he could give a defense of this strange doctrine that he's speaking. Now, Bill Daniel's doctrine is strange to me. And it's strange to the Bible. It's foreign to the Bible. If he's really a prophet and a man of God, why wouldn't he be right here? Why wouldn't he be right here? Give a defense. Give a defense. You say, well, James, we don't know that he was invited. All, you, all you're doing is saying he was invited. Well, let's just, let's, just, uh, let's just proceed. Let's just proceed a little bit further before we get to Bill Daniels and what was actually said. Remember, we're trying to compare a known prophet to a false prophet. Paul said in Colossians 4, 2, not only did he dispute and be invited to give a defense of the gospel, he said, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with or praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of God, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. 2 Corinthians 2.12, he says, furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. So Paul was always looking for an opportunity to, pre to preach. He was always looking for an opportunity to speak. Even if it was <clears throat> on the top of Mars Hill with a bunch of individuals who disagreed with him, who would dispute with him, who would take issue with what he said, who would mock what he said, and that's in, indeed what they did. That's indeed what they did. Notice this. He stood on Mars Hill, verse 22, and he began preaching that they were too superstitious because they had all these gods. And notice what happens when he gets down to the end. <clears throat> when he gets down to the end and he talks about the resurrection from the dead, notice what happens. <clears throat> And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this man. Now, would it not be the case if Bill Daniels and anyone like him is indeed a true prophet of God, that he would relish the opportunity to come and set forth the truth of God's word, even if it meant being mocked or being scrutinized, criticized, it seems like he would relish the opportunity to speak to hundreds of thousands of individuals instead of the 25 or 30 that was there last night. 
Why not take another hour? Why not take two hours? Two hours above what he already has on TV. See, that's all taped. He doesn't have to. <clears throat> he's not doing that live. So why not come on TV? You know how I know he won't do it? Because notice this. This is how I know he's not a true man of God. Because Prophet Bill, when a door of utterance is open, a door that he, Bill, said would be opened, he wouldn't walk through it. Now, notice what he says. Notice what he says. God's going to open up a door. All right, so it sounds good. Sounds good. God's moving. Open the door. Well, my friends, before some of you call in and say, well, he, he predicted that door was going to open. Friends, I had already determined that I was going to invite him to come on this program before I ever got there. So it wasn't something miraculous that just happened. But the door that he said would be opened, he didn't know that it was going to be opened the way I opened it. But if he was a true prophet, a true man of God, he would have said, you know what, I'm glad for that opportunity. I'll be there. I'll be there with bells on. I'll be there at the drop of a hat and drop the hat to get there. You see? He wouldn't say, "Let me tell me how to get there. He said, I'll be there. And as a matter of fact, he said, I'll be there. But after the, it was all over with, and I didn't have time to pull this off, but after it was all over with, he said, no, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. Well, we knew he wouldn't come. Why? Because he's not a real man of God. He's not a real prophet. You see? When you compare Bill Daniels to men like Paul, there's no comparison. No comparison. Why? Because he's a false prophet. Paul's a true man. True man of God. See? Now, friends, are you starting to see how dangerous it is for prophets like Bill Daniels to come into our community and not be withstood? Remember, John said in John 4 and verse, verse 1, <clears throat> try the Spirit to see whether they're of God. Now, isn't it a dangerous thing if we let individuals like this espouse whatever they want to say and, and go unchallenged? Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. You got a word from the Lord? Yes, sir, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I know what you're talking about with those people like that, uh, so-called Prophet Bill. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of those guys up there claiming they healing people and so forth. And you were talking about the material. I called a couple of weeks ago uh, with you guys and got the book, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ. Because uh -huh. you know, I was a Baptist, I guess you could say was, because I wanted material on that. And the guy that wrote the book is Leroy Brownlow. Right. I will tell everybody out there, y'all didn't charge me a dime for that book. Y'all sent it straight to me. And I uh, just want to let everybody out there know. And if you, if anybody out there wants that book, I, I would uh, recommend the book to anybody out there to read that book. Because, I mean, it definitely explains a lot. And I learned a lot from it. So I just wanted to spread that out there for you. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. And, and just by the way, on that book, that's it's easy to... It's an easy read book, isn't it? 
Yes, sir. It's I mean, very, laid out, very. Like I said, it explains a whole lot, <clears throat> and it goes along with the Bible. It's got easy scripture, and that it goes along with everything. And the thing that I, I, I definitely like was the, the part on there where it explains a lot of the baptism. That explained a, a whole lot to right. me. Uh, I believe Johnny was talking about uh, born in sin. He had that debate the other uh, other day. Right. And that explained a whole lot to me, and it was, it's very informative. Well, I appreciate you calling it, and I'd like to, <clears throat> I hope that maybe in the future sometime we can get together and meet face-to-face. -face. Is that possible? Uh, yes, sir. Maybe someday. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. I, would, I would definitely enjoy that. Well, uh, would you would you mind me when you when we get off talking, putting you on hold, and you giving a phone number? Yes, sir. That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, because, you know, that this is what we're, what we're talking about. We're, we're trying to get individuals to, you know, to really realize, you know, it's not about us. We're not trying to make names for ourselves. We're saying... God wants us all to be unified and be one, and that may involve opposing guys like this who would mislead someone. Yes, sir. You know, we wouldn't. Uh, you know, we wouldn't let. Uh, I mean, we have uh, a whole website for pedophiles. You know, you have to register as a sex offender. Yes. Why? Because we want people to know where these individuals are, who that that our society deems are dangerous to society. Yes, sir. Well, I think maybe we ought to put a website up for false teachers. I think it, so too. It'd be it'd great. It'd be mighty long. It'd be mighty long, but, but that's <laughs> that's what we're all about. So, are you are you live here in Reedsville or Eden or? I'm in the uh, Henry County area. Henry County. Okay. All right. Well, well, I know uh, the, the brethren up there at 823 Starting Avenue. Be glad to have you meet with them and, yes, and get to know them. And you'd be a, a welcome guest. I can assure you. Have you ever worshipped with the the folks up there? No, so like I said, I've, I've been a Baptist, and I just have recently, you know, like I said, I, that's why I wanted to get this book to learn more, mm -hmm. because when I started watching you guys, uh, it got, this is what got me interested, and uh, since I've read this book and I've listened to you and Johnny, uh, it's what really has got me uh, believing more and, and so forth, and I watch y'all regularly, so uh, that's where I'm at now. So. All right, well, well, I'm glad to hear from you, and I, and I really appreciate you, you know, telling everybody that you know that's that's the way we've that's the way we treat we treated you and that's the way we will treat everybody you know we we're not looking for money uh i think straightforward we can, i mean it's straightforward it's just like you said a while ago you hadn't asked for a dime everything i've asked for you've gotten to me and i mean it's been straightforward so all right well well i appreciate you calling yes sir all right have a good night you're on the word from the lord yes sir uh how would you turn, summarize... Turn your, turn your TV down just a little bit. Is that enough? Yeah. How Go. would you summarize the scripture, James chapter 2, verse 10? James 2, 10? Yes, sir. Okay. How would I, how would I summarize it? Yes, sir. Um... Uh, <clears throat> Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the idea that some individuals would would say that only one part of the law is is important. The the inclusiveness of the law. In other words, God's law is to for all of it to be kept. Now, the old law, the old law, you understand, was nailed to the cross. Colossians two fourteen. That was the Mosaic law. Right. Right, but the principle here is you can't just pick 